just more to 19. That's the 19. That's okay. It doesn't matter. It was supposed to be recognized Sunday, oh. but it wasn't. Oh, okay. So these are the readings for today, and then I'll read the... Okay. And then we'll skip that, and then I'll read the second option. The last of the day. Five okay, so we don't have the second reading? Yeah, we do. We do? We do. So we got two readings today? Okay.
Behold, a faithful and prudent steward, whom the Lord set over his household. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the solemnity of St. Joseph, uh, which is ordinarily March 19th, but it was transferred from yesterday because of the, the Lenten Sunday. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were said to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for this day. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Today's celebration holds the rank of a solemnity which calls for us to say both the Gloria and the Creed. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Nathan, spoke to Nathan and said, go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise you up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall bind, uh, build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Responsorial, the son of David will live forever. Son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. The Son of David. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn David, my servant. Forever, I will confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The Son of David. He shall say to me, you are my father, my God, my rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Son of David, Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham. 
who is the Father of us all, as it is written, I have made you Father of many nations. He is our Father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. Thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as all righteousness. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went according to the festival, festive custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his, as his, at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished and his mother said to him son why have you done this to us your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety and he said to them why were you looking for me did you not know that I must be in my father's house but they did not understand what he had said to them he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them gospel of the Lord This gospel has one of the phrases in scripture that always, always sticks with me, always uh, kind of gives me pause and is, a, is an occasion for, for reflection. And it's, it's that last one of the gospel reading. He was obedient to them. And we, we think about it, we think of the, the depth of what's being expressed there. It's, we're being told that the creator was obedient to his creatures, that the, the greatest humbled himself enough to become obedient to the lesser. And it makes me think of one of the, one of the antiphons that was said in, in morning prayer this morning was, God made him the master of his household. God made him the master of his household. Speaking of Saint Joseph then and and showing what great what great trust our Lord puts in us, put in Joseph, and by extension, uh, what great what a great responsibility our God entrusts to all of us, the whole church. And what's the task entrusted to us? Well, for one thing, it is, like Joseph would have done, to, to, feed, to feed and nourish the Christ, to feed and, and nourish the image of God that, that all of us carry. We might consider our, our, each of us as, 
as in our lives responsible for the for the Christ for the the child Jesus in some way and we might ask how are our how are our lives nourishing that child how are we feeding him how are we living in such a way that that he grows to his full stature again that's entrusted to us what are we doing with with the charge given us that others come to know the lord because again that's the responsibility that that has been handed on to to us the church the church of, of whom saint joseph is the patron it's for us to raise up that image of god so that others come to know him again it's marvel it's a marvelous truth how our how our god has humbled himself how he's placed himself in our hands in a sense uh, and is in a way subject to us. He comes to be known to the world by, by the lives of his faithful, by the actions of his church. It's a marvelous truth. All of us are like the parents of Jesus carrying the divine word within us. All of us, like, like Joseph, are, are entrusted with, with, uh, with the care of that divine word. And like St. Joseph's Old Testament predecessor, we're in fact charged with increasing that, that divine bread, and making it available to, to more and more people to give life to the world. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. We offer now our prayers of petition. We pray for our uh, Holy Father, the Bishop of Rome, that by the intercession of St. Joseph, he may be a worthy steward of God's house, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who work, for all those who labor, and for all those who are in search of work, that all their works and labors may be rightly rewarded, we pray to the Lord. We pray for families, that they may practice within their homes a love that is a living image of the Holy Family, we pray to the Lord.
attend to the pleas of your household, mighty God, and answer us according to your holy will through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you a fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven, and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, the full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world. Pray to receive him with your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, like a mother does for her child.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. I only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.